Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, I appreciate you stopping by on today's video. Hey, let me know in the comments section below if you've ever driven or maybe you own a vehicle with white wall tyres. They're pretty badass, I think they look really, you know, uh, prestige when you're cruising around with white wall tyre vehicles. Personally, I've never had one. But today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about why is it that Russian, Soviet era or Chinese style vehicles back in the day had white wall tires and white wheels i.e the rims and someone asked me the question and i absolutely had no idea you know see these military vehicles on parade and you see you know even vehicles in the ukrainian conflict still with these sort of white painted tires even and i had a couple of small guesses but i didn't actually know the true reason so i decided to take a little look into it not the most sexy or engaging content in the world but it's also a question i just wanted to answer myself and i thought you know what maybe my uh audience might like to understand a little bit about why is it that they do have those white wall tires so let's talk a little bit about the reasoning and rationale of where even white wall tires came from and why have they disappeared during time now your car's tires have been black for quite some time i can safely assume that and uh cars have not always had black tires it's pretty obvious tires were made of rubber and rubber is black however pure natural rubber is not ideal material for tires believe it or not because it wears so quickly and tires that wear out prematurely are obviously good for nothing particularly in the military you don't want to be having vehicles that are designed that should across most militaries around the world go up to at least 500 kilometers with absolutely no issue especially fuel so if you can't even make that which older vehicles back in the day with standardized rubber couldn't do you needed to find other options. Um, so manufacturers were looking for something to make tires a lot more robust and stronger, and their answer they came up with was zinc oxide, which was relatively hard and easy to incorporate into the rubber compound. And yes, you've guessed it, zinc oxide is white. And so were some of the early tires. So not just with the white walls, but entirely white. Yes, we actually had wheels that weren't painted that color, um, which we'll talk about shortly. They were actually designed and manufactured that way. And that is one of the partial reasons as to why you see Soviet military era vehicles, or especially really older vehicles, uh, obviously with wheels, not tanks, with that white wheel now manufacturers did decide to add carbon black which significantly enhanced the durability of the tires but this was to save money uh, and manufacturers did actually start to put black rubber only in the treads so basically the tread of the vehicle had the black and everything else had the white and through time in the civilian industry of course it looked more prestige and more sexy having that sort of white wall tire but interestingly you know they were more luxurious in the civilian world but in the military world it was ignored right they just wanted better grip and durability onto the wheels themselves so in the russian military world it was a lot cheaper to manufacture wheels for mass production across the spectrum of the fleet with the black tread for the enhanced you know tread depths and particular types of wheels that they need to go off road but with a cheaper overall rubber um you know vulcanized setup for the outer portion of the wheel so that's one of the reasons um as to why you see older style military vehicles having that white wall and it's also a huge reason as to why you see on military parades the same thing because most of the time when we look at russian or chinese or even north korean uh, parades you see older style vehicles and that makes sense right there's a lot of them they're not actually going to be used in particular conflicts if they ever occurred and they just look kind of cool right going through history having some heritage in their military showing the white walls kind of like it just looks really cool however um there is other reasons as to why wheels were white and that is one that i actually had no idea about now many of you may have paid attention that of course when you look at say conflicts around the world um that are going on even in africa you still see soviet era style vehicles with not the rubber that's white but it's almost like they've been painted and this is not done for beauty now military equipment has really been put into storage across the you know soviet chinese era from the cold war to today for a long time and i mean a long we're talking like years and years of time in storage and wheels don't like sitting out in the sun and in the weather and the cold with that kind of long-term period of storage so you don't want them to be failing if you have to pull them out of mothball and go into service and of course when the sun starts hitting black they get super super hot now of course when you start putting things in preservation uh, engines etc you have to do your own protection but for the wheels under that direct influence of sunlight the tires heat up and as a result they dry out and crack and they lose that strength and elasticity so Although the wheel itself may have not been produced as a white wall with the sort of cheaper style and was a standard black tire, 
Militaries around the world, when they put these vehicles into mothball, would actually paint the outside of the wheel to reflect that sun. And therefore, when setting up equipment for long-term storage, uh, the surfaces were covered with that protective compound. Um, you know, even in the 20th century, we still have that going on today. Um, there are certain vehicles that we place this stuff on uh, because they're left in mothball for a long time in high extreme temperatures, say Africa, places like that. And what they use is a mixture of aluminum powder with a light oil varnish or aluminum paste uh, with a white spirit and a chalk composition. So it's a mixture of about 75% chalk, 20% glue, 4.5% uh, slaked lime, soda ash, and fennel. The tires are painted white in contrast to the black under the influence of that sunlight so they don't heat up and of course the drying and cracking actually is significantly slowed down now i cannot really say what the overall impact of that is if it actually truly preserves the tire but i think it definitely makes sense um from what i've been told and i've talked to a couple of people that have heard of this stuff sort of stuff happening before it does help significantly, especially if the tire pressures are reduced at about 70% of the nom nominal pressure that's in that vehicle tire so that the cracking is reduced even more. And this method protects the tires from that aging and as a result, really, really helps mothboard fleets staying for a lot longer in storage than having to worry about them um, you know, cracking and failing as soon as you take them off the start line. Now, some of these vehicles tend to be put on bricks or sort of left in storage on sort of uh, without even their wheels on. I know when I did my um, tasking in the Falkland Islands to what we call war stores, uh, there's a huge warehouse that's just full of Land Rovers and other vehicles that were left behind after the Falklands conflict. And I was actually tasked there for a few months to just kind of, you know, do preventative maintenance and keep the war store fleet, so to speak, ready to go. Now, we never painted the tires because they were put in nice little hangers and tucked in bed with their, you know, warm milk and blankie and teddy bear. But, uh, you know, Russia doesn't have that luxury and nor do other countries around the world. And they literally just put them into fields, paint the wheels and hope for the best. Um, it's cheap, it's easy, it's quick. And I actually just think it's, in terms of ingenuity, pretty smart. I think it's a really cool idea. Um, of course, as I said, though, on a prestigious level of things, when you see these vehicles going out on parade and things like that, there isn't um, a huge amount of technological involvement there or preventative maintenance side of things. It's just to kind of reminisce of the old times where, you know, the old trucks, the old artillery pieces with the uh, towed howitzers, things like that, that have those beautifully, you know, pristine, crisp looking white wheels. I think they look really cool. I mean, when you see an old you know, Buick or, or Ford with those white wheels, you think, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And you know, it probably costs a lot of money, even though ironically, when they first came out, that was actually the cheaper option. And now the black is the opposite way around. But uh, I just find that kind of uh, interesting that, you know, the military does the same thing. White wall tires are still sort of the sexy, more sort of uh, high end level of uh, showcasing of military equipment. So I thought it was really interesting. Maybe you thought it was really boring, but I really appreciate you stopping by on today's video to learn a little bit about rubber and military vehicles in storage and tires. Um, if you did enjoy today's video, please leave me a like, leave me that comment. Of course, I really do want to understand if anyone has driven or used those white wall vehicles. Um, I've never had one before or been in one, but they do look really snazzy and professional when you're driving around in one. So let me know in that comment section. Uh, of course, hit that little like button. And of course, if you do want to be notified of upcoming content from my channel in the future, click that subscribe button and of course the bell button beside it so you can be notified. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you have any interest in checking out some of my merchandise or my sponsorship check the description box below for all my other patreon and paypal links etc thanks again folks have a wonderful day bye bye